Now, Shakespeare and books, plays, aren't English. They're literally not written in English. That language that I that is written here, that is definitely not English. And this is a book that made it kind of easy for me. And yeah, it was it was at least at least it was readable. Hello, full book questers. It is I are in the book quester. So today I have this playbook known as Shakespeare, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, written by Shakespeare himself. And well, let's get right on to it. So, basically, Shakespeare writes like this. Let, 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 let me read you an example. Steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance to the morn of May, there will I stay for thee. Does that sound like English, or does that sound like some other language? You tell me. But, side by side with it, it's written in the normal language that everyone understands. So, so this is a paragraph in Shakespeare in English, and this is a paragraph in normal English. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, that's the Shakespeare. Oh, Lysander, I swear I'll be there tomorrow. I swear by the Cupid's, Cupid's strongest bow and his best gold-tipped arrow, by the goddess of love's innocent doves. I mean, you can tell, like, on the right, yeah, that's... I mean, it's, it's cringy, but it's still plausible. The left one is just... Oh, God, what is that? And, and well, um, now I'll get on with the plot. I got it all written down here because... Their names are ridiculous. So basically, uh, the book started with Thesis and Hippolytia, Hippolyta, can't pronounce that, um, planning their wedding. Now, these two are very main Greek hero demigod figures from Greek mythology, and we know them very, very, very well. And yeah, since I love Greek mythology, as you can probably tell, you know, I enjoyed it a lot. And then, I, I like the fact that there are elements of Greek myths in there, and Shakespeare knew what it was doing, and it's a little bit fresher, you know? Plays about, actually about people that they didn't know about at that time. Then, of course, we can talk about the characters. There's Hermia and Lysander who love each other, but whose father, Hermia's father, forbids Hermia from loving Lysander and wants him, wants Hermia, to marry Demetrius. Demetrius, meanwhile, loves Hermia. Meanwhile, Helena loves Demetrius. The ultimate love quadrangle. Or how, how, how you may call it. It's super messed up. And then there's the fairy king Oberon and his incredibly, incredibly mischievous servant, Puck. And of course, there is a beautiful fairy queen, Titania. And to punish Titania, Oberon gets get some juice from the flower of Cupid so that when he sprays the juice within within the fairy within the person or fairy's eyes the first person that they lie their eyes on would be the person that they fall in love with so it's crazy and basically he while Oberon is flying through the forest he saw he saw Helena loving Demetrius, and Demetrius just giving hate to Helena. Fun fact, basically what happens is that Lysander and Hermia decide they're gonna run away because they want to, and they don't, since their father, Hermia's father, don't want them to marry, they want to go far away from Athens and marry, which is great for them. But Demetrius and Helena, stupid names I swear, they follow them, and they tell them, tell after them, and Oberon sees them, and he sees how much Hermia, I mean Helena, loves Demetrius, and he thinks, I should put some Cupid's juice inside Demetrius' eyes so that he will fall in love with Helena. And so, it is done. But, and he sends his best servant, Puck, to do the thing, do the job. But, hell goes wrong. Why? Because he mistakes Lysander for Demetrius and puts the Cupid juice within Lysander's eyes. Then Lysander, when he wakes up, the first thing he sees is Helena, which basically just means that, you know, we're messed up because now Lysander loves Helena and Helena thinks that Lysander's being cruel and teasing her. And meanwhile, 
it's going crazy and Demetrius is confused and Hermia is hurt. And then things got worse. So Oberon file found out what had happened and made made Puck put more juice within Demetrius' eyes, which made him fall in love with Helena. And Helena thought it was all a cruel trick that all three of them were playing on her. And it was all going crazy. And meanwhile, Titania was was had fallen in love with a man with an ass's head, so yeah, things are going ridiculous. It's not much of a novel, really. It's a very simple plot. It's just, it's just a play, guys. It's a play. It's a play. It's not anything special. And then, of course, um, Oberon cures Lysander and Titania from their aching love of the person that they first saw when they opened their eyes. Except Demetrius, who continued to love Helena. And then the fairies made them all go to sleep. So that what had happened was all just like a Midsummer Night's dream. Clichéd. And then there's the wedding between Theseus and Hippolytia. Hippolytia, the pathetic place some people play on, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing too special about it. Of course, it's a play, so it's very simple. I'm sure it was very, very dramatic, <laughs> and I'm sure it was hilarious. Let's be honest here. Things could have not gotten more hilariously wrong with Puck. And yeah, honestly, I think this entire story could have just happened by four adults drinking a lot and then just going crazy in the bar and then waking up later thinking, oh my god, it's a midsummer night's dream. Like seriously, you don't need fairies to pull you into sleep when there's when there's alcohol everywhere in every street. And yeah, so I already talked about the no fear part of it, since it's written, some parts of it is actually written in actual English. And I know Puck, Puck from the Sisters Grimm series, mostly because I really, really like that series. And yeah, it's an epic series, and it's about how fairy tales are real. And uh, and Puck is definitely a fairy tale, and he appears. And he's one of the most annoying characters, and I felt very glad that I actually read the source material, and it was very enjoyable. I don't know much about how, why Shakespeare's, I mean, plays are good. Let's be honest here, it's just icky, icky romance. Like, icky, icky romance. Like, it's gross. And, I don't know, I don't, I don't get, I mean, maybe people at, the, at that time loved this melodramatic romance, but... Honestly, I don't know why it's worth reading now. Worth reading now. Um, yeah, it's just, that's pretty much it. And, like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. I don't know, I have mixed fe feelings about this. It isn't, like, horrible, but it's just pointless. What's the moral of the story? There is there's no such thing as moral. It's just, like, a pointless, mindless comedy. Well, I have to say, it wasn't as bad as it was when I, read, when I tried, tried, and failed to read Romeo and Juliet. That definitely is not English.